Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jessica and we are working on block 10 of the 2023 Scrappy Sampler. This is going to be our final block for this week. It's a Dresden block. If you've never made one before, do not worry. They are not difficult at all and I'm going to walk you through it. Let's get started. There's a couple parts to making this block. The first part we're going to work on are the blades. Let me just show you this little drawing of our block today. Ignore all the letters on it. I just wanted to show you we are using a solid background, but it's broken up into these quadrants so that you can see how many blades you need per quadrant. Our Dresden has four blades per quadrant, so we need a total of 16 blades. We're going to start by making one blade. I have this fabric. I use this, the template that is provided in the free pattern on my blog to do this. The first step is to fold it in half, long ways like this, right sides together. You want to be as exact as you can be here because the way that you fold this will affect the shape of your Dresden bleed. So right now I'm just finger pressing this down just so I get a little crease. I'm gonna hold it folded still and I'm going to sew along this top length. Now I have my stitch length turned down a little bit. I like to turn it down to about a 1.8 to do these. I am going to start sewing with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm gonna to come to the end and back stitch again to secure it. So this is what I'm left with. Now, the next step is to trim a little bit of this seam allowance. So I'm going to, this is a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna cut it about in half. So I have an eighth of an inch left behind. And then I'm just gonna like angle it up like that. The reason that you remove this is to remove some of the bulk in the seam allowance when you flip this. Now the next step is to push this seam allowance open with my fingers. Now I have one, my thumb inside holding it open and my finger on top and I'm just sandwiching that seam allowance open. And then I'm just going to flip the plate inside out and I'm going to use a crochet hook or a point turner, something that you can use to poke this point out to be the way that it should be. I like a crochet hook because it has this, it's kind of like bald and it also has a point. So while you can firmly push this in here, it's not easy to really ruin this. If you have something that's too sharp, you can go right through your seam allowance and it'll just poke a big hole in the top. If that happens to you, you do have to start over because you'll have exposed raw edges here. But this is um, a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook and it, I like the size. So I push that so the point looks nice. And I am also making sure that this seam line that I just sewed is in line with the crease that I had made before. That's how you get like a perfectly symmetrical blade. I am going to press this now. So I'm laying this blade down at my pressing station. I'm making sure it doesn't move around a lot, that my stitch line is still in line with that crease. And then I'm just going to set my iron on top of it and press it. When it's pressed, it'll look nice and flat. The point will be nice. The seam line is again in line with this fold that you can still kind of see. On the front side, you'll have a nice point. These two edges are tucked under and they're finished. And then you have raw edges along this side, this side, and the bottom. So this is one blade we just made. Again, for this Dresden block, we need 16. I'm gonna show you one more time, just so you can see it again. So I'm taking a blade that I cut from the template and I'm folding it in half. I'm trying to get it exactly folded in half. And once I feel like it is, I just finger press this. Okay, then we're gonna sew along this top edge with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and at the end. And then I'm going to cut some of the seam allowance away to reduce the bulk. I'm cutting it in half to give me about an eighth of an inch there, and I'm going like up on an angle. Then I'm going to split the seam allowance open with my fingers, hold it secure on both sides, and just flip the blade over. Use a point turner or a crochet hook to get your point to lay nice and make sure that this seam line is in line with the crease and then press. 
So as I mentioned before, we have four blades per quadrant of this dress. And so I tend to work in groups of four because of that. I have two blades made and to sew them together, I'm gonna flip them right sides together and I'm making sure they are lined up nicely. So I want their points to match and I want these two sides to match, which are usually called shoulders. So I want these shoulders to match up and then um, the rest of it. Now the rest down here isn't as important. Like if you had to pick a top or a bottom matching, you'd pick the top because this bottom is gonna be hidden under the Dresden center. So if they're a little bit off from each other, it's fine. But this point you're gonna see. So I have them matched up. I come down this side and when I put it in, I'm dropping my needle just a little bit beyond the edge of the fabric and I'm gonna start sewing back stitch to secure it. And then I'm just gonna sew the rest of the length here. Now this can get trimmed away because this is just extra. So this is what I have just sewn. So I started just a little bit in from the edge. I sew down and I back stitched and then I sew the remaining length of this. When I open this up, you'll see that the two shoulders right here meet really nice. And this is your goal. Now it doesn't always happen. Um, sometimes you have one that's higher than the other, but the goal of this, the ideal is to have a really nice V here where these two pieces are exactly meeting at the same height. So that's two of the ones in our quadrant. I have the next two made and I'm going to add those on. So to do that, it'll just be the same way. And you can sew these all into pairs first and then join the pairs into groups of four, however you like. I tend to just sew them together in groups of four. So I started down a little bit. I back stitched to secure it. And sew the length, and here it is. And then I'm going to add the final one on for this quadrant of the Dresden. So I'm just making sure again that everything is matched up nice. Okay, and now I have a quarter of our Dresden made. Now let me show you a little um, trick here for making sure that you're on the right path. So first I just wanna mention pressing. You can decide to press all of your blades in the same direction, either way, or you can press like alternate ones open like this. I tend to go all in one direction. So the way I would just press this is all pointing to one side. So I press them now and I have them all going one direction. Now it really stinks to make a whole Dresden and then have it not lay flat. So here is how I check the way that I double check that I'm on the right path is if this line kept going and this line kept going, they'd intersect perfectly at right angles. So the way I check that is I get one of my rulers and I line my, like just one of the measurements up along. And then I double check my, this blade should perfectly come down the edge of this. And it does. It's, I'm a little forward, but it does. There we go. And uh, so if, I, if that happens, if my blade lays perfectly on the edge of this and perfectly in line with one of the measurements here, it means that I do have a perfectly positioned quadrant and I can continue making these. And then when I sew the four quadrants together, they will fit into a flat circle. The next step is going to be to make the remaining 12 Dresden blades. And that's what I'm going to work on. quadrants made now and the next step is to start sewing them together so I pick two and I sew them together we match this up as on, as just as if we were just sewing you know two blades together so I'm matching the sides and the top on this one together 
to make sure they're going to be placed at the same height. And then we're going to sew and back stitch and then sew all the way down. And here's half. It's going to be half of our Dresden. And now I'm going to sew the other two together to make the other half. So I match these up here. Repeat the same process. This blue one is a little bit shorter than the green, but remember I said that that doesn't matter too much. If the tops are matching nice and the bottoms are off just a little bit, it's fine because it's gonna be covered. So now I have two halves and these should be flat in line with each other. Uh, like this red line should continue straight to this purple line. That's how you're gonna get a nice flat Dresden. If they're not even with each other, your Dresden will not lay flat when it's opened up. So now I'm just gonna sew the halves together. I take two blades that are next to each other and sew. And then these other two blades, I'm gonna lay them together, matching again the points, the sides, and sew those together. And sew here. Just like before, I'm coming at it from the other side, but I'm going to stop right before the edge and back stitch. And now, when we open this up, we should have, no, it needs to be pressed so it might not look like it's laying flat, but a really nice flat laying Dresden. And to press this, I'm just going to flip it over and look at the ones that need to be pressed, because some of them were pressed before I sewed the group together. And just hold my iron there and press those turn that there do this one this one needs it so it's really every fourth blade because the where I sewed on the quadrants those are the parts that are not pressed right now and then here and then there's one more and after we do this we'll have made a really good portion of the look so we just made this beautiful Dresden plate and what do we do next? We have two things to do next. The first thing is we need to applique it to our background. We can machine applique or hand applique. And then we need to make the Dresden center to cover this middle part. Let's work on appliquing it first. The first step when I'm appliquing a Dresden to a background is I take the background and I fold it in half and make a crease. I'm gonna use my iron here to iron this crease into the block. I open it up and then I take it the other way, making sure everything is lined up perfectly square. And I iron another crease into it right here. And then when I open this, I have this, you know, grid shaped that resembles the picture that I showed you in the beginning with the lines coming down and the blades. And then if you remember, we had four blades per quadrant. So what I do is I take a, a seam line between two blades and I line it up with one of the lines. Then I count four over and I make sure this line is lining up with the seam line. And if it's not, I just adjust it. And I repeat that for each quadrant. So once this is in line, I make sure that this side is in line. And then once the, once the top and the two sides are in line, that means this bottom, let me back you up a little bit. That means this bottom should be in line too. And once you do that, once you have the, everything lined up, that means your Dresden is perfectly positioned in the center of your block. At this step, you can glue based or pin based. I'm going to pin. I am going to hand applique this down, and if I was doing that, I'd usually use applique pins because they're shorter. Um, they're these really short little pins, and it helps so that you don't get um, picked with the pins while you're moving the fabric around. But I don't have those with me right now, so I'm just pinning with these. And I usually, I'll pin probably every other just to hold it while I'm appliquing it, but you can do every one if you'd like, whatever you're comfortable with. Or again, you can glue-based. 
And I'm just gonna go all the way around until I have every other Dresden pinned to the background. And then I will hand applique this down. Just a note on um, machine appliqueing, you can do a straight stitch. Just right, if you wanna do a straight stitch, you'll just go right inside and stitch all the way around the outside. You can do a zigzag stitch so that you're going onto the background fabric and onto the Dresden fabric. Uh, those are the two um, most common ones, I would say. I personally, if I was gonna do this, I, would, I like how the straight stitch looks, but it is, again, personal choice. I am going to applique this, hand applique this though. So now I have all my Dresden's pinned. I'm gonna get my needle and thread ready and start appliqueing. Okay, so I have everything pinned like I just showed you and I got my needle and my thread and there's cat hair all over my block. So just ignore that. They treat these blocks as their, as their beds. And just as I did in the tool up applique, I'm going to come up a distance away from where I'm starting, which I can feel with my hand, I'm gonna be starting about here. And I have a knot tied at the end of my thread and I pull until the knot comes becomes like secure there. Then I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm going to take my first stitch. I'm gonna come up through the background and I'm gonna grab just a little bit of the Dresden fabric, the blade. And then I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna work counterclockwise now. So I just hold it in my hand and I go down into the fabric and then I come back up and I grab the Dresden blade as I go. And with the tulip block, I was matching my thread to the applique. But here, because we have so many colors, I chose a white thread that matches nicely to my background. And I think that we won't see these stitches like at all because I think they will blend into the background. But if we do, I'm okay with seeing them. So you pick the thread that makes you feel the most comfortable um, with how your block looks at the end. And I'm just gonna keep going all the way around this Dresden. I'm spacing my stitches about an eighth of an inch apart or thereabouts. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger, but I'm shooting for about an eighth of an inch apart. And I, I don't tend to grab more than one stitch at once like you could. If you wanted to, you could go like down, up, and then you could go down again. <laughs> Not that neat edit since I don't do it. Down again and then up again. You could grab, load more than one stitch at a time onto your needle, but when, when I'm doing applique, I tend to go one stitch at a time. So I'm just going to keep moseying along around this whole dress, and I just want to show you, I'm almost at the point, and that's what I want to show you. Just like when we had the point in our tulip. Now this point isn't that perfect. I have a little, um, it's not as straight as it could be. I'm going to leave it go, but what I do when I get to the point, let me take one stitch here and then I'll go to the point. So after this one, I'm going to come straight down into the fabric and then my thread keeps getting caught on my camera. Okay. And then I'm going to come right to the top. I'm going to go up into the part that is the point and then I am going to go straight down into the fabric from the point and I find that if I go straight down there it just gives me a really nice looking point compared to if I was going to try to grab some fabric at the side like and keep doing my next stitch like I just take the, the stitch one point at a time and I feel like it gives me a really beautiful looking point so at every point I will do that. I won't go sideways and stitch like I'm doing here along the side. I'll just go straight down into the fabric and then I'll bring it up a dis you know an eighth of an inch away on the side and continue. I just finished hand appliquing my dress into my block and here it looks pretty good. Um, I, I do think the stitches hit in pretty nicely even um, 
even on the red. I mean, you can see them a little bit, but not too much. And again, I used white to go into the background just because we had so many different colors here. I felt that was the best way to do it. So the final step is to make the little circle that goes onto the Dresden. So let's do that together. Okay, so we're about to make the center and let me just explain this template a little bit to you. This is on the blog, it comes with the pattern, you just download the template for free. We already use this one, this is what we use to cut out the blades. The seam allowance is included in this, so you just use this template to cut your fabric out exactly as it is and make the blades as I already showed you. The dress and center is a little bit different. There's a note there that says no seam allowance included. The reason this is, is because there are many ways that you can do this. You can do, you can just cut it out and use that to cut your fabric and have a raw edge applique. Raw edge applique is when you don't finish the edge of the center or whatever piece that you're making and then you just stitch it down using either some kind of like adhesive uh, or just straight down to your fabric. The issue with that is that the edges will fray over time and they won't hold up. So I like to finish the edges of my center, just how we finish the edges of our Dresden. We have no raw edges showing now. Let me grab it and show you. So we finished all these edges. This has was tucked under. That's how we made the blade originally. We folded it in half and we sewed against the raw edge and then we were left with this shape. The raw edges that were on the sides are now sewn together with another piece and they're tucked under. The last place we have raw edges is this center and we're gonna use that center to cover this up so that there are no raw edges on this block at all. So oftentimes people like to decide when you're doing applique their own seam allowance. Some people use a quarter of an inch, some people use three eighths of an inch, some people use you know a little less, a little more. It, you know, it's very personal decision of what to use. And I find that it the only way you get to know what to use is by trying a bunch of different things and seeing what you like best. So when we're cutting this out, I am going to cut it out exactly as it is. And then we're gonna add our seam allowance when we get to the fabric. So the first step is to cut this out. Be ex as exact as you can on the line because it is a perfect circle. And the way that you cut this out will affect how your shape looks because we're gonna use this template to make our circle. So the more exact you cut this out, the more perfect your circle will be. Now the next thing we're going to do is, if you remember on the last applique block we made, which was the flower, we used freezer paper. So I have my freezer paper again. This is three layers of freezer paper ironed together. And if you didn't watch the tool up video and you don't know um, about freezer paper method for applique, I'd encourage you to go and watch that video. I talk in detail there about what freezer paper method is and um, how you do it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my Dresden, the template that we have, and I'm using a mechanical pencil so I get a really nice, uh, like close to the circle edge drawn. And I just trace this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. And then this piece is what we are going to use to form our circle around. So you're gonna grab the fabric that you need for your circle. What you're, what you're going to do here, what you're going to do is use your fabric as a guide and you're gonna cut down to maybe a half of an inch or so around your circle. It could even be a little bit bigger. This doesn't have to be precise. This doesn't need to be a perfect circle. Anything like rough will work. So here's what I did. Now we're gonna go to the sewing machine. Now we're at the sewing machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, uh, first I'm going to grab my bobbin thread. Now I don't have any up. There's like, there's none sticking up. So what I do is I grab a length of my thread. I use the hand wheel to take a stitch and that's gonna lift up my bobbin thread. So I'm just using these like scissors to get this out to my finger. Okay, so did you see there? So here is my bobbin thread. It's coming out of the hole down there, that's my bobbin. So now I have these two threads 
the top thread and the bobbin thread. And I'm gonna just hold them to the side. I'm gonna turn my stitch length up. I use, my machine goes to a six, so I usually use a six. And I'm going to stitch slowly about a quarter of an inch in from my edge. When I take the first stitch, I hold on to these threads so they don't go anywhere. And we're gonna take a, st we're gonna stitch very slowly around the edge. Because, I don't know if you've ever stitched with a thread at this length, because your thread is very long, your stitch length is very long here, your piece is gonna start curling up. That's okay, you're not doing anything wrong, that's exactly right. So we're just going to, and, it, and I just like got really close to the edge there, but you'll see why this doesn't matter. This part is just a basting stitch. It's going to help us. So this is, this thread is gonna be removed. This is just to help us gather a nice circle. Okay, I'm making my way around. Okay, and then once I get back to this part, I'm almost back at the beginning. I'm going to get my two threads out of the way. And when we come around here, pushing you in, to see. I'm going to come around here and when I get back to the beginning I am going to either go on the inside of my stitches or the outside of my stitches. I'm not going to crash into them. I'm going to go like around them a little bit. So here I'm going to go choose to go to the outside and I'm just going to stitch like just a few stitches past. I'm not going to cut my threads the right regular way I do. I'm going to lift up my presser foot and I'm going to pull both threads so I have two long threads coming, my bobbin thread and my top thread. And now I have this piece here. So this bottom stitch line right here, let me get mine. This bottom stitch line is where I started. I went all the way around the circle and then when I came back, I did not, I did not touch this thread where I started. I went around it. And also you could go inside of it if you want, whatever way you can do. So you take a couple stitches past it. And then what I like to do is I take the two that I ended with, the bobbin thread and the top thread, and I tie them into a knot. This is so I don't confuse what goes with what. So that one's tied into a knot. And then I take the two threads I started with and I tie those into a knot too. Okay, I'm just gonna clip this because it's, it's like extra long. I didn't need that long of thread. So now I have these two threads coming off of this and they're tied together so I don't mix them up. I take my template now and I put it in the middle of the circle and then I grab onto the threads. This is where I have them tied and I start to pull one of the threads gently so your thread doesn't break. And I'm pulling, as I'm pulling this, it's cinching the fabric around this circle. This one I'm having a hard time pulling, so I'm going to readjust and try again. Okay, I'm going to readjust and pull, and I'm just going to gather this in, okay, until I have all of the fabric just cinched around this center. So I'm almost there. I have almost all of it done. I'm gonna just continue cinching this last part. And what happens here if you pull too hard, your threads will break and you won't have anything cinching the fabric anymore. So you'll just have to repeat that basting stitch and just do it again. It's fine, I've done that before many times. Okay, and I think I can go a little bit tighter here. There we go. Now it looks really nice. It's pulled snugly around the back. I have my threads here and the front looks really good. So now we go to the iron. Now I am going to, just like we did in the other applique, I have my starch, this is what I use. And I'm gonna spray it a little bit into the lid here. Okay. And you don't have to, you can just spray it directly on here, but in this beginning part, I like to direct kind of where I'm going. So I'm just like putting it on my finger here. And I'm just doing a little bit at a time. My iron is hot. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the iron and I'm just going to come straight in and press and press along um, each of the edges of the freezer paper. And all the way around, I'm gonna do this same thing. I'm just getting a little bit of starch on there. I'm pressing inward. I'm coming in perpendicular to the fabric. I'm not coming in at an angle. 
So as I do one, I stop and I'm gonna rotate the piece so that again, I can come onto that spot perpendicularly. Just straight on like that. Be careful you don't burn your fingers here. You can use like a stiletto or something else if you like uh, to make sure your fingers aren't getting burned. And once you have done your whole circle, you can stop and then just set your iron down on top. Then flip it over and make sure that the circle looks nice and round, that you don't have any tucks or um, creases that come to the edge of your fabric. This looks good to me. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna press it here from the front. Then I'm gonna let it cool. After it cools, I'm gonna come in with a small pair of scissors and I'm gonna snip just into it. And I'm gonna go ahead around this circle and I'm gonna cut, leaving a quarter of an inch behind. That's gonna be my quarter of an inch seam allowance here. It doesn't have to be perfectly exact. I'm just roundabouting a quarter of an inch and I'm cutting all the way around and meeting at the other side. Almost there. Great. And then this part with the threads, that's the center, just comes right out. And you're left with a round piece with a quarter of an inch seam, quarter of an inch seam allowance. I like to press it again here just to make sure. And then what I'm gently going to do is lift the edges up. Now, if you remember when you're working with a freezer paper, it does stick to the fabric a little bit, but I'm gonna lift it out and then I'm gonna press from the back. If you'd like, you can spray with more starch at this point. Uh, sometimes when I flip it over, I give it a little bit of a spray right now, just a little bit here, and then right on it. And then your circle is finished. So let's applique this down. So I'm now. at my block. The last piece, like I said, is to cover this up, and we just made our circle that's gonna do that. The way I find out where to lay this circle down is very much about just like how I folded the background before we aligned the Dresden. So I fold the circle in half and I give it a gentle crease at the two edges. And then I fold it the other way. I match up those two creases we just made and I give these edges a gentle crease. And I mean this thread, I see this thread here from my basting seam. I can pull this out and leave that out if I like. So now I have a crease at each you know, direction. And then I take those and I match them up and the, each crease should match up with the fold line of your block. And if you have that, if each crease is matching up, then your center is perfectly placed on your block. And I actually think I'm just going to use a little glue here to hold this down because, like I said, I don't have my applique pins, so I'm just going to use a little glue. I have a glue stick, and before I stick it down, I'm checking those creases. There. Now that's going to temporarily hold that for me. And what I'm going to do is I am going to hand stitch all the way around, just like I did when I stitched this Dresden down, to stitch this circle down to the Dresden plate, plate, uh, block. You could also machine stitch this. You could use a zigzag or you could use a straight stitch all the way around just inside of the edge. So I just put my needle in here with a knot tied in the thread and I came up a distance away and I pulled it so it's snug. Now I'm gonna flip toward the front, find out where I just was, which is right about here and I'm going to start stitching this. I'm going to come up right on the edge of the center. See my needle coming up there and secure it. And then I'm just going to, just as I did when I did the blades, I just go down a little bit into the block, into the background, and then I come up on the edge of the circle just grabbing a little bit of that th threads on the edge of the circle and I just repeat this all the way around 
and you could glue this center down better if you like or you can pin it i i just put a tiny bit of glue to hold it in the center but um if you're a beginner you'd probably want that secured a little bit more so the flapping up in the back didn't make you nervous that it was gonna move or be sewn on like crookedly So compared to sewing down the entire dress in this part is quick because you just have this little circle to do. This is where I started, so I'm almost there. Just a few more tiny stitches. And then I just make sure everything's snug. Then I'll go down through the back. I'll flip the work over. And here is where I tie a knot in my thread. I just get it anywhere. And then I, I do a double knot. So I hold my needle. I hold my needle where the knot is and then I pull it and it makes the knot go exactly where I want it to. So I just did that. You can see that better when I make the tulip block because I'm using colored thread. This thread is white and it's a little hard to see. So if you want to see that step again, flip back to that video because I show it there. And then I'm just gonna go under, right now I'm underneath, like I'm not through the block, I'm under this orange and I'm under the white and I'm coming up a distance away. So I'm in between the two layers. I give a firm pull on my thread and that gets the knot to go underneath which is going to secure this and then I'll just clip this thread in a minute but I just want to show you that this is finished now and we just finished Dresden blocks I love making them and they're really not difficult but I find that there's like a lot of mystery around them so I hope this let this tutorial let you see through the mystery of making a Dresden block and that you feel comfortable enough to give it a try it's a really fun rewarding block and it just turns out so beautiful this is not our last one in this quilt <laughs> just a little preview of what's coming but if you have any questions on making the block leave it in the comments and let me know and I will see you back here next week when we start our blocks for next week. Thanks for following along.